This is Walking with Jesus, a devotional journey through books of the Bible from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. I'm Jason Van Bemmel. Well, we are in day 30 of our journey through the book of Hebrews, and we're coming to the middle part of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 is probably the most dense and difficult section of Hebrews, but it's also very important for understanding the theology of Hebrews, the theology of the church, of Jesus, of who we are before God. And so we need to spend some time unpacking some of the central themes here. So we're going to be looking at the central part of Hebrews chapter 9, verses 6 through 28, focusing on this question, do churches have sanctuaries? Do churches have sanctuaries? I'm not going to read the whole passage for you, just some, some selected verses. Focus on where these verses talk about holy places. By this, the Holy Spirit indicates that the way into the holy places is not yet opened as long as the first section is still standing, which is symbolic for the present age. But when Christ appeared, as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption." Thus it was necessary for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with these rites, that is the Old Testament sacrificial rites, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has entered not into the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true things, but into heaven itself, now to appear before the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself repeatedly, as the high priest enters the holy places every year with blood not his own, for then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. That's Hebrews Chapter 9, verses 8 and 9, 11 and 12, and 23 to 26 in the English Standard Version. So what do you call the large central room of a church where the congregation gathers for worship? Is it a sanctuary? Well, the word sanctuary means a holy place. Do churches have sanctuaries? We know the tabernacle and the temple did. They had the holy place, and then they had the holy of holies, the most holy place. But what about churches? The language of Hebrews 9 is complex and dense. We're not going to be able to unpack all of it during these daily devotionals, but I'd like to focus on the language of holy places. Hebrews draws a contrast between the man-made holy places of the Old Covenant, that is the earthly sanctuary of the tabernacle and the temple, and the real holy places of heaven, the new covenant holy places. You see, under the old covenant, the priests would enter into their holy places with the blood of animals, and specifically into the holy of holies once a year on the day of atonement with the blood of animals. But Christ Christ entered into the heavenly sanctuary, the real holy place, with his own blood. And Hebrews says that the ineffective nature of the old covenant sacrifices was shown in the fact that they had to be offered over and over again. But the complete perfection of Christ's sacrifice was shown in the fact that he made his sacrifice once for all. He died once for all, he presented his sacrifice before the throne of God in the heavenly sanctuary, and it was finished. Interestingly, the language of Hebrews says that Jesus did this at the end of the ages. Look back at the opening words of Hebrews and you'll see that the letter begins by referring to the time we live in as these last days. You see, Jesus' death and resurrection actually marked the end 
of all previous eras of human history and the start of the last days. Why? Because access to the real heavenly sanctuary has been opened up for us by Jesus' perfect sacrifice for sins. So do churches have sanctuaries? No. Our sanctuary is in heaven. And yet while churches do not have sanctuaries, churches are sanctuaries. Believers are living stones who are being built up into an eternal living temple. Christ dwells in our hearts by faith through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And when we gather for worship on the Lord's Day, we are gathering as the sanctuary of God, and we're lifted by the Spirit into the real holy places, that is, into heaven, into the very presence of God. So churches are sanctuaries, they don't have sanctuaries, and they become doorways to the heavenly sanctuary when we gather for worship on the Lord's day in these last days. And that's a powerful picture of what Jesus has done for us, of what we are in ourselves. We've been made into his holy dwelling place. And it's a powerful picture of what gathered worship is on the Lord's day. We are being given a heavenly foretaste of our final ingathering when we gather on the Lord's day morning for gathered worship. It's a regular time to anticipate and participate in heavenly worship.